Hello guys, welcome back to Axangel RC. So, following last week's test of the CHM30 HD FV system, I was pretty excited by its potential capabilities and even though I had planned on taking it slow and testing thoroughly with the stick antennas first through all the operating modes, all of that patience went out the door pretty quickly and I found myself mounting the ground unit on my MyFly Dream crossbow mini antenna tracker and connecting the two via Mavlink so the tracker can get the GPS data from the plane in order to track it. Idea is that for as long as there is any video signal between the ground and air units, Mavlink data for the tracker will be flowing and it will be actively tracking. Wasn't anything complicated, TX and ground from the ground module go to RX and ground from the tracker. Rest is just a 3D printed mount for the ground unit. With it having its own battery, I didn't have to worry about powering it while on the tracker and that battery actually lasts a long time. I am surprised at how little this thing consumes. I charged it when I got the system, have done 3 flights since, around 40 minutes each, haven't recharged it and it's still showing above 7 volts for the 2S lithium ion battery. So at least 2-3 to three hours of continuous operation are possible which is pretty impressive, although it is a good idea to not let it run too low so the unit can work on slightly higher voltage should give better results. I also replaced the stick antennas with the small patch antennas provided with the system. After powering the system on, the tracker was seeing a valid data stream from the ground unit, so all was good to go. Now, in order to test it in stages, I decided to start again from the 5km mode and see if these directional antennas are going to make a difference when it comes to the range. The duck was off and the test was now on the way. And here is the funny bit. As soon as I reached 5530 meters, the image froze, the exact same distance as last time. But then there was no tracker and the ground unit had the stick antennas on it, which means that this mode has a hard-coded limit, just like the DJI system. Regardless of what antennas you use. But also check this out. Even though the video feed is no longer updating, the Mavlink data for the OSD is making it through, albeit at a slower pace, but the OSD data is still changing, which means it does have some connection to the air unit. So, I flipped the return to home switch, plane turned around and I just love the fact that the system is able to regain the link so easily and so far out so that I can have a working video for the return trip. I was going to bring the plane closer in and change the mode to the 8km one without landing but I did notice a nice little cloud right in front of the plane so thought I'd go for it. As it happens, that was the lowest cloud I've had the pleasure of flying around all year and it was the last one for the day, so close to home point. It was literally above my head, so gained some altitude and had my first HD powered cloud surf. Thank you, C. My only regret is not having enough space in the nose of the duck to also mount the DJI Osmo Action so it can record this in 4K video. Funny thing is that while I was cloud surfing, my friend developed an issue with his 4 meter glider, lost his orientation and pretty much had no idea where it was or how to get back to home point. So I was constantly putting my radio down so I can go deal with his plane and point it home. Let's just say it was an eventful flight. After I was done with the cloud, as the plane was flying above my head, I changed the working mode on the ground unit from the 5km one to the 8km one and you can even see it change on the OSD as well. The video feed froze for a bit and then came back and the change was done on the air unit as well. So with all that altitude to spare I headed out again. And I guess unsurprisingly this time it did not freeze once I passed the 5.5km mark but kept going so changing the modes does indeed make a difference. Question is what kind of difference and that is something which I couldn't find explained in the manual so we'll have to inquire about it as the manual states the system operates on 320 milliwatts and does not mention output power changes with the different modes. But anyway, I pressed on and just before the 8th kilometer, the video feed froze at the 7.7 kilometer mark, which is pretty close to what is claimed by this mode. So my guess is this one is also hard coded in some way up to that distance. I flipped the return to home switch and the plane came back on its own. I landed and before I powered down the system, I changed the mode on the ground unit to the 24 kilometer long range one for the next flight. 
I then recharged the battery and let the duck loose again, this time heading against the wind so that I would have a chance of making it back if the battery gets too low on the way out. And so the kilometers kept piling on and pretty soon I was past the 5.5 kilometer mark and very soon after it just whizzed past the 7.7 kilometer mark and then the 8 kilometer mark and kept going. All seemed good, video was looking a bit lower quality, I think, compared to the other two modes and I think there may be slightly more latency in this mode but honestly nothing that would really make any noticeable difference on a flight like this or while cloud surfing etc. So I'm fine with that. Not long after I was past the 10th kilometer and things were still looking pretty good and then it was about to come up to the 13th kilometer. So at this point I want to take some time to advise the DJI guys to brace themselves. If you are standing up, sit down. If you are walking, stop and grab a hold of something solid. If you are driving, which you shouldn't be while watching videos, stop the car. And just in case you are already lying down, good. At least when you faint, you won't hurt yourself. But joking aside, it went past the 13th kilometer as if it was nothing and just kept going. Even when it passed the 10th kilometer, it was already within my expectations, so I was happy. Going past the 13th kilometer definitely made my day. And then when it passed the 15th kilometer and the RSSI was actually going up a little bit, that was now officially above what I expected it would do. For those of you who watched my previous video and remember what I said there, that if it does 10 to 15 kilometers, I'd be pretty happy and it would be more than enough to do some nice cloud surfing. Well, it was now officially doing better than what I had hoped for, so I was thrilled. However, I needed to see what it can do in this mode, so I pressed on. Now, keep in mind the manual says that for this mode the optional 70 dB antennas should be used, which I don't have a pair of just yet, but hopefully soon will, and will be able to test with them as well. Also according to the manual, the directional antennas currently on the ground unit should be used for 10 to 20 km range flights, so by all accounts they have done that job pretty darn well especially considering it is well over the 15th kilometer now and the video is still working. I know that flying directly into the sun isn't the ideal situation to allow proper judgment of the detail visible on the ground, but even in these conditions I think the camera is doing pretty good. But not the point of the test really. So as time went on we finally neared the 18th kilometer and I did notice just a bit of freezing here and there very little and then finally just as it passed the 18th kilometer the video started to freeze a lot more but not like with the previous modes it didn't just completely freeze it would come in and go out a little bit so it would seem this mode is pretty different than the others they may not be any hard-coded limit and here better antennas would indeed hopefully make a difference but there you have it, the HM30, an out-of-the-box plug-and-play system with the factory provided antennas aimed properly of course, did 18 kilometers on the first try in the long-range mode without hesitation. I'd call that a mighty fine result. And again, like before, albeit a bit slow, the Mavlink data was still coming through and the OSD was updating occasionally, even if there was no working video feed for a while. A stable ish video came back around the 14th kilometer but that is still heaps and bounds better than it actually not coming back until the plane is right on top of you. On the way out I was rocking the plane left to right even towards the 18th kilometer to check the latency and I can confirm that it is not that bad when talking about long range plane flying. Definitely not suitable for racing copters or any very close proximity plane flying. So keep that in mind. This system would not suit and fit everybody's needs and expectations but that's okay. It doesn't need to as long as it has a much better range than the DJI system. <laughs> it has its own place and the results speak for themselves. Sadly this day I did not have the chance to try the 40 km mode with these antennas but will also get this done first chance I get and hopefully by then I will have two 17 dB antennas in my possession so I can then try these modes out with them mounted on the tracker and see if that makes a difference. 
In any case, 30 kilometers is still a good way out, so remains to be seen what is still possible, but at least right now it did 39.97% more distance than the absolutely maximum limit of the DJI system, which only a few people have really achieved. Most people report 10 km range and then it gets pretty dodgy, so compared to that, we have an 80% increase in range with pretty smooth video, which I'd say is a pretty decent result. Also, I can't help but comment on the seamless integration with the MyFly Dream Crossbow Mini. I just plugged it in and it started working without really changing anything other than the baud rate in the tracker settings. Absolutely brilliant and well done to both CE and MyFly Dream for making it so easy to get amazing results almost out of the box with gear from two separate manufacturers. I only had to DIY the cable a little bit but I also think this could be done using Bluetooth modules which would require a bit more work and frankly I do prefer the cable. And speaking of antenna trackers, CE do sell one as an option for the system, but since I already had the Crossbow Mini, I'd be sticking with it for the time being as it seems to work pretty well and is more than capable of handling the weight of the ground module along with the battery. This has been a really good day and these were some pretty useful tests. Soon, weather permitting, I hope to have more testing done at the 40km mode with the current setup before moving on to the larger antennas. Until then, if you have found this video useful, please like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and also consider commenting or in any other way engaging with it as it helps it get seen more and helps my channel grow. Using any of the affiliate links in the description below to purchase anything from those websites will help support this channel and my family at no additional cost to you. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there and I would like to express my eternal gratitude to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and would continue to do so. I wish you all successful HD flying and I will see you in the next video.